my expectations were here and because of them, and this is always you guys, we went So Miranda, <laughs> yes. hi. Uh, so it's been almost 10 years since the future premiered at Sundance. How long has this idea been gestating in your head? Well, you know, I, I, I'm a multidisciplinary artist, so I have a different cycle than other filmmakers. Um, it, I only thought it up a few years ago, um, uh, and then I made it. But before that, I wrote a novel, and I did a performance, and I made an app and opened a store. So it's, um, it's just hard to... I think for someone like you, it's like I only appear every 10 years, but I do exist the rest of the time just working in other mediums. Yeah. It was a great novel, but I will say that the, the thing that's interesting about this project is it's, I, when I first looked at the description, I realized you're not in it. So oh, right. how did that happen? I know. It was weird. I had the idea and was working on it for like a couple days when suddenly I was like, oh, hold up. I'm not in my 20s or my 60s. There's no part for me in this movie. And then whatever, I kept writing. And I just, I just was like, I guess I'm not in this one, which didn't, didn't seem like a big deal at any point, really. Did you guys ever think, like, not get you. in here? I mean, yeah. it was for me because <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. So, you know, just one of the leads in the first Run in July film that she's not in. It's no pressure. Yeah. Yeah. No it, shoes to fill. <laughs> Evan, were, were you uh, a fan of Miranda's work prior to, to the project? Yeah, absolutely. She was on my list of people that I was dying to work with. So this was really a dream to get and to read for multiple reasons. I had never read a script like that. I think being in something that's a new idea or a new vision is a luxury these days and to be given a role like this and you know a piece so kind of extraordinary was really special. And Gina what about you when you first uh, came across the script what did you what did you make of, of the story that Miranda wanted to tell? Uh, what did I make of it? I don't uh, I don't think there's any way you can make of what Miranda creates I feel like you just experience it you just kind of like dive into the deep end and um, she throws you a buoy. Like, I don't know. You, it's, it's a very surreal experience with her because she is also sitting right there and I'm talking like you're not right <laughs> next to her. But she is phenomenal and, and also a phenomenal human being and I love you so much. And I've never, the privilege of being a part of this project is through the roof for me. I never imagined I would have this kind of opportunity and then to work with these giants. And then she left us so soon. Me? No, oh, Miranda. Miranda. Yeah, she's. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about you like you're not here. You're, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where'd you go? Um, yeah, it was. It's incredible. Reading the script before reading the script, when Miranda reached out to me, I was like, I don't even know what's happening here. I don't even. How is she even thinking of me? And how does she know I exist? And um, I mean, I know that she exists. <laughs> and uh, and then reading the script, you're like, this is a this is a very special woman human, like Richard says, very special being. Uh, and then she had this notepad that I always wanted to know what was written on. Oh, yeah. A notepad, her coveted notepad. What uh, was on the notepad? Oh, <laughs> I mean, I've tried asking. I just, you, can't just go you know, like every take, it's like a reporter's notebook, yeah. and I just write down my notes, and then I go over, and sometimes you guys are like, so bad. I just wanna. look at the notes, but <laughs> my handwriting's so yeah. bad, and I just, kind of give them the notes, and then I sit back down and cross them off, and then we go again. <laughs> R Richard, uh, you're known for juggling so many different kinds of parts, and it's, it's kind of fascinating because we just, as, as a viewer, I never really know where I'm going to discover you next. I'm curious how you sort of sift through the options at your disposal to say, this one seems like the right fit right now. Um, well, you look at the quality of the writing. Um, I was thinking as we were talking about, I, when I read this, I, I don't remember any exposition in this screenplay. And there is, but it's so beautifully written that you don't even see it. Nobody says, uh, you're my daughter, and uh, you know, it's, it's, the, it's just really beautifully um, um, put together. And I look for that, and I look for a part, and I say, do I have anything to offer this? You know, sometimes I say there's a lot of other people that could do this better than me. But uh, uh, when I got the script, 
I think I was about 10 pages into it, and I said, uh, my, my first reaction when I know I wanted to do it is I'm reading the character, and I go, please don't die. That, that's the first thing you say. How many uh, times have you died in movies? It, well, and then you, it's a great character in the next page, and a knife hits, oh, jeez. Well, <laughs> this was, um, I knew 10 pages in that I wanted to do it. I, I, there's no, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> but, but I don't do things I don't want to do anymore. And there was a time I had to. But um, uh, this was, this was, as they've said, this was like nothing else I've ever read. And then I met her, and now I know why it's like nothing else. She's like nobody I've ever met. I, I mean, also wrote you a love letter. I thought it was my letter that did it. Oh. <laughs> She's now severely disappointed. Yeah, yeah. It's and, like, that was the best letter. I worked so hard on it. So I put it in my drawer with all the other letters. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, I missed it. It, it, was, it was, and it was an extraordinary uh, experience. We, we had, I think, I just thought we had such fun. On yeah, it. And yeah. it was, uh, um, you know, she's, she has a vision, um, and it changes every day, and it's, it should, and, and you can talk to her, and, and you have discussions about what things are, where they're going, who we are, what are we doing, and um, she discovers along with you, and it's, uh, it's an amazing experience, you know, um, yeah. Miranda, people mm -hmm. always say filmmaking is a collaborative medium, and I'm curious about, since you do work in so many different modes as an artist, what appeals to you specifically about the collaborative challenges of filmmaking? Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, think I have projects where the whole thing is just me sitting alone writing. Like, there's never another next step with a book. Um, <clears throat> so I think, like, when I'm on set around all of you, like, I'm a... I'm a little like ner socially nervous, I'm, like, <laughs> um, but I also am like so delighted by what other people know, you know, because I'm used to the just the limits of what I know and pushing on those, and and it's like being handed gold each day. I mean, I would um, uh, I drive home. Remember Yuri, our yeah, producer. Yeah. I drive home with Yuri and my assistant Elizabeth, and I. I'd often say something like, my expectations were here, and because of them, and this was always you guys, we went, like, I, I always had this feeling like, God, I'm so used to just getting this. <laughs> That's all I ever hoped for. And like, how the fuck, what, what, how did we get up here, you know? And that was, I mean, when you talk about collaboration, that's what's only possible, is that you go past what you know how to do yourself, you know, that, yeah. Evan, I, I wanted to ask you about something sort of bigger picture, which is it's always exciting when actors are committed to a big show and find room to do other cool projects on the side. So I'm curious with Westworld, just how much is your sense of, of how, how long you're going to be committed to doing that and, and sort of what the long-term prospects of that show are, given that you, know, you, you obviously want to do other oh, things too. Oh, I wish too. it were up to me. I mean, I'll do it as long as they want me to do it. Um, it's been wonderful having that show because um, it has given me the opportunity to do projects that I really want to do and to hold out for the ones that I feel are really special and um, and you know Westworld's not even one of the things where I feel like oh I, I have to do this so that I do other I mean it, it's such an incredible show and it's so well written and it just knocks me on my ass every season and it's the hardest thing I've ever done the most challenging grueling show to work on but um, but I love it because it, it pushes me to my limit. And um, again, with two really incredible storytellers that are really trying to get a certain message across and sort of reprogram people. And, you know, I feel the most fulfilled when I'm working on something that is challenging, even though I like vent a lot and I'm tired and frustrated. That usually means I'm, I'm doing something that's really worthwhile. Because um, I can get bored very easily <laughs> if I'm not challenged enough. And this was one of those films as well. You know, it, it, it was a complete transformation where I had to sort of change everything about me. And it's such a contained performance. And those can actually be the hardest. Sometimes it's easier to kind of just be like wild and, and to let go. But it's hard to hold things in and to still communicate. Um, I'm rambling. But um, <laughs> the thing about working with her because of Westworld is nothing we could ask her to, to do on this 
held a candle to the insane things she does on a regular basis on this <laughs> It's true. So like, you for I'd be like, anything. Evan, are you okay doing that? Do you need like another pad? And she'd be like, I've ridden bareback being <laughs> shot at. Like, I mean, just these crazy. It's true. Sports. Every response was always, dude, it's not. Whatsoever. And I'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm such a wuss. Like I, yeah. How much do you know about where that show is going? Well, we just finished season three, um, so I know quite a bit. Um, I, I don't know how long they're planning on carrying it on for, um, but I know that this season is unlike anything we've done. It's like a different show. And she's going to tell you all of it yeah, right please. now. All of it, yeah. Where we are have, we going? We have new cast members. We have Aaron Paul and Lena Waithe and Vincent Cassell, and it just, it just keeps expanding and growing. Um, so I'm really excited for people to see where where we've taken it. Last question for Gina. You got this Disney Plus thing coming up. I'm curious about what your relationship is to TV opportunities versus you know more movie projects you might have in the pipeline. Uh, well, um, finished Jane like eight months ago, and I did that for five years. So that took up a good portion of my existence, and happily. Uh, the Disney Plus show I'm executive producing, I directed the pilot, and I'm just trying to create other opportunities for other people. You know, I got to live out a lot of my dreams, and so I want to make it possible for others to do the same. So that's where a lot of my energy is right now. Keep directing. Yeah, and I want to keep <laughs> directing and, um, uh, and making room for, you know, Miranda's next movie. <laughs> and, um, but that. just kind of like, you know, um, just very grateful for the opportunities that have come and, uh, and trying to create others, you know? So we'll see what happens.